What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Lionel Jinx. I am the creative director of the WW2K franchise. And this time I'm not alone, y'all. I've got my homie with me. She is going to be with me along this journey, this ride. Christina, please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hey y'all, I am Christina DM Pham, art producer on WWE 2K22, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Ringside Report, brought to y'all by the teams at 2K and Visual Concepts. We're here to provide regular updates and deep dives into the many areas and features of WWE 2K22. And this year we're introducing the WWE 2K22 Ringside Reports, and you'll hear from Lionel and myself beginning now, through the game's launch in March and after for the latest on DLC, patches, and other updates. And we're not gonna be taking this ride alone because we're bringing the homies from the dev team with us. So- Come on, bring them on, bring them on. But before we dive into that, let's kick it off with a very quick conversation about visuals because let's be real, if y'all take a look at WWE 2K22, you might see some massive differences from previous cycles and this is the best looking game yet. Just oh, a it's little pretty. Bit. It's, it's so pretty. <laughs> Lionel, can you talk about how the teams approach production differently this time around, starting with the superstars? So the superstars, you know, in, in any WWE game are the backbone of the game, right? And so we have to make sure that we are doing our absolute best on representing every superstar to the best of our abilities. And in order for us to do that, we piggybacked on the same technology that you guys saw in, in NBA 2K22, uh, uh, where you know you look at their their players and the details and just the likenesses look amazing. And so you know we shared that same technology and brought that. Uh, into WWE 2K22, like the cross polarization scans, um, improved hair, just to me, the, the amazing amount of detail that you'll see in our superstars is unparalleled for us. Yeah, and also the teams have overhauled the lighting engine and there's an all new VFX engine as well. Yeah, uh, so, you know, lighting is everything, right? So like all of these details and everything that we poured into our superstars uh, wouldn't mean anything if, if they weren't lit properly, right? And so um, if you, you know, take a look at this version of the game compared to any other year, like it looks like a broadcast. It looks photorealistic at times. And a lot of that is due to lighting. And before I forget, there is also a ton of new and improved championships as well. And um, one of my personal favorites, mainly, mainly because it's the team I work with most cl most closely is the environment team. Um, there are over 55 playable arenas and we also have virtual crowd boards in the game as well. So you might see some familiar faces. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> not my ugly mug. <laughs> All right, we know what y'all been waiting for. So we have some folks in the waiting room. I'm gonna go ahead and invite all of them in. So y'all, we're so excited today because y'all know who we got. Please welcome the gameplay leadership team, principal designer, Jason Vandiver, senior designer, Derek Donahue, and senior producer, Jonathan Rivera. Y'all, this is extremely exciting. And thank you so much for joining us for the first episode of Ringside Report. Okay, so I don't wanna linger any longer because folks have been asking for gameplay for a very, very long time. Uh, without further ado, the moment y'all been waiting for, we are going to show you a 1v1 match between Rey Mysterio and Damian Priest. So let's roll the footage. So at this point, one of the things we very intentionally called out to our fan base is that we have a redesigned gameplay experience. And starting with Jason, um, can you talk about what that means to you and how gameplay hits different? Uh, in WWE 2K22, uh, we have a completely new animation system. Uh, this system has allowed us to greatly improve the look and the feel of the characters. Basically, everything from the way the characters move and they traverse through the world, to how they align with each other during attacks has been completely overhauled and redone. Players are going to notice a significant difference the moment they pick up the controller. The characters are way more responsive than they've ever been. You no longer feel like you're fighting to control your character to get them into position to do what you want them to do. Strikes, dives, springboards, they all connect more precisely. And that's also something that we really struggled with and, and took to heart and tried to, to resolve this year. Another key change that we've made 
to a game engine this year is our physics system. Uh, while the series has always had Havoc to some degree, it was primarily used for only hair and clock simulation. Uh, for 2K22, we've completely integrated Havoc into gameplay, which has allowed us to introduce things like breakable props. Uh, the kendo stick starts to fray the more you use it. Tables, they break more dynamically. Uh, the chair even breaks. Um, and even elements within the environment itself are now dynamically breaking, such as like the corner barricade, instead of relying on a canned sequence animation. It's a really big change and has helped to make the, the entire gameplay experience feel more dynamic. Awesome. Derek, same question. So for me, when we sat down to figure out how we were going to change gameplay for 2K22, one of the biggest things that we we put as a priority was making sure the game is is fun in a pick up and play kind of way. I want to be able to hand the controller to my friend who doesn't know anything about WWE, and I want them to still be able to have a good time and be able to just kind of hop in with me. So we made sure that with our controls redesign, all of the core actions are something you can discover just by button mashing. You should be able to basically play through a match without having known anything beforehand. But another big priority for us with that is making sure we're not, you know, smoothing over a lot of the details that returning fans like. So all of the high level of control that you expect to have with your character, all of the high degree of customization you expect, all of that still remains. Okay, so you've mentioned new controls and mechanics. Um, combat itself is centered around three inputs, light attacks, heavy attacks, and grapples. So in this cycle specifically, what do those terms mean? So light attacks, those are your quick strikes, the fastest attacks in the game. Heavy attacks, those are kind of like strong strikes from previous years. They're bigger, slower strikes, but they deal more damage. And then finally grapples, those are where some of the bigger changes come into play. So you press the grapple button once to lock up with your opponent, but then from there you can press light, you can press heavy. Uh, those will do your light and heavy grapples, but there's all sorts of other options. Irish whips, drag, carry, all of those things come from the grapple state. So once you grapple your opponent, you have a lot of possibilities opened up to you. Okay, and I want to toss this over to Jonathan too. So opening up these possibilities, can you talk about some of the combo options that players can dive into? Yeah, sure. I love how uh, simple and engaging our new dynamic combo system feels. I don't need to memorize every superstar's move set, but instead I practice the timing of my inputs in order to execute combos. Light attacks allow me to branch into a combo, and when I learn that light, light, heavy grab executes that move, I can take that and apply it to anybody I play with. I love the exploration that our game provides, so I encourage the user to play with many different superstars and then choose whichever one is better suited for them. And if you don't like the combos that we assign, we also support customizing combos. I'm personally really excited to see what cool combos our community creates. Okay, very quickly, I want to take it back to one point that Derek touched on earlier, which was about the accessibility of this game and being able to just pick it up and play. And I want to call this out mainly because I myself am a much newer player to WWE 2K. So for me, picking up and playing has been the whole experience. The controls are super easy to learn. And while my own habits fall back on button mashing the controller, even though we have that, I enjoy having to be very strategic and intentional about how I'm approaching this game, especially when it comes to the timing of things like reversals or finishers. So I can definitely attest to, hey, if you're feeling intimidated by this, please don't. Pick it up, try it out. You'll have such a blast. But also, if you're a vet, you've been playing this for a long, long time. Uh, can y'all talk about how vets can better show off their moves and what that means for the overall strategy of their experience? So a lot of the strategy for our game comes with the new defensive options that we've added this year. So one of the biggest examples is breakers. Uh, instead of reversals being the only tool for countering your opponent's attacks, uh, grapples and combos actually don't use reversals. Instead, you counter them with a breaker. So when you're doing a grapple or a combo on your opponent, they can counter that attack by pressing the same light, heavy, or grapple input against you. So those moves are countered with breakers. Everything else is countered with a reversal. So knowing what kind of attack you expect your opponent to perform can already prime you to know how you want to counter it. So there's already a mind game with that level. Then you have blocking, which is all new. Uh, if you hold down the reversal button, you enter a blocking stance, and that lets you withstand light, heavy, and running attacks. Uh, and then you can counterattack faster than your opponent can after blocking. Uh, you can also dodge with the right buffer. So you can kind of choose a direction and get out of the way really quickly if you time your dodge correctly. But it's higher risk than a block. 
And then when you're on the ground, you also can button mash to get up faster, or you can press right bumper to do a quick get up uh, at the cost of some resource. So when you have all of those defensive options available to you, it makes when you're on defense, that's a lot more strategic, but also when you're on offense, you have to be careful with how you want to attack your opponent so that they don't counter you. So our community has been speculating about the HUD and like guessing like what, you know, these little glowing meters mean and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you be the first to break this down and break the news. And let's dive into uh, the HUD and give the, the community some clarity here. Uh, so our goal was to create a HUD that strips down all unnecessary aspects and simply gives the user the information that they need without distracting the user from the in-game action. So at the very top, you'll have the vitality meter, and this is basically your health bar. Below that, you'll find a special meter, which is a resource you want to spend to perform signatures, paybacks, or defensive action. Finally, at the bottom is your finisher meter, where you can store up to three stocks. So there's one thing that's, that's missing that I think a lot of people are like, where, where, where's the reverse stock? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a, a little bit more about like, you know, the changes we made there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, obviously the biggest change uh, that we made was the removing the reversal stock from the HUD. We felt that 2K20's matches came down to how the users manage their reversal stock. We wanted to bring a bit more skill to a match by giving the users unlimited reversals, but making them a little bit more difficult to execute. In our internal matches with 2K22, we get wild swings and back and forth and a, a, a bunch of oh-so-close moments that we really feel make the match memorable. And in addition to that, um, we added a new stun meter that shows up on the characters when it's close to being filled. So we're really excited to show off our new HUD and, and for, for our users to play with all of the new additions and our streamlined approach. Cool. Like w one of the things that, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the match where I'm like, you know, in previous years or, you know, iterations, once you, you could, you, you basically knew once the, your opponent didn't have any reversal stock, all you had to do was hit your Sega finisher match was over. That's not the case anymore, right? Like someone can just pull out like a reversal and there's this back and forth. Um, and so Derek, can you talk about the, like the, you know, how strategy is, is, is incorporated into that, that part of the, this new mechanic? Yeah, so with reversals no longer being on a limit, that opens up a lot of possibilities for how your opponent can counter you, right? Like they could always pull a reversal out, uh, or if you're using combos and uh, grapples, they could hit you with a breaker. But the stun meter that Jonathan mentioned earlier, that's one of your biggest tools for making sure that you can pull off your biggest moves without getting countered. So lighter attacks, while they don't do as much damage to the vitality of the opponent, they're better at filling your opponent's stun. And if you can get their stun meter filled, that's your opportunity to perform an attack without the risk of getting a reversal or a breaker button mashing is back y'all like i love it it creates a whole new level of like intensity in those those uh those tight matches and uh yeah like i, I gotta practice my finger strength on, on that <laughs> just, just so i can beat everyone down when, when this game goes online all right y'all we can go on and on but unfortunately we're out of time so to close out now that we're nearing the end of production, what are y'all looking forward to most for the game, whether for your own experience or with players specifically? Um, let's start with Jason, then Derek, then Jonathan. I'm really looking forward to seeing how my rise turns out. Uh, we've been working so hard on gameplay that I haven't really been able to look at the rest of the game. Uh, those guys have been really, really, really working to deliver an awesome, awesome story this year. And um, from everything I've seen, uh, they're ready to deliver. You two, get in the ring. For me, uh, it's the backstage, uh, the completely redesigned backstage. I think people have only seen a, a small peek of. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff going back there, especially with the verticality. And for me, it's I'm super excited to see Rey Mysterio in our showcase mode, playing some classic matches that were recreated for, our, for WWE 2K22. So I think people are going to be really excited about that. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us for the first ringside report ever for this That's cycle. messed up. You didn't even <laughs> ask me, Christina, like what I'm looking forward to. That's just messed up. Don't leave me Fine. out. We'll That's take it said. back. We'll take it back. All right. Rewind. <laughs> Lionel, what are you most excited for? It's everything, right? Like, you know, uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to like have my hand in, the, you know, every single cookie jar and 
Um, as you can tell, like this COVID weight ain't going away anytime soon. <laughs> but um, yeah, like, I, it, you know, it's seeing, you know, what, what we're doing on the gameplay side and how that bleeds into universe and how it bleeds into my rise and, and, and my GM, my faction, like it, we've done so much um, in the time that we've, we, we have. And I, I'm just super excited for everyone to get their hands on with it and, and just have fun. Like, again, like just practice, practice now, practice your, your thumb strength because you're going to need it. <laughs> your thumb, st thumb, st thumb strength already. <laughs> Dude, thumb exercises, little thumb push-ups. Y'all, so All that, right. again, that wraps it for our first ringside report. Thank you to Jason Vanderbilt. Derek Donahue and Jonathan Rivera for joining us. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and he's oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> was I supposed to you come out to the bit. No, I, I think I was <laughs> Okay. So once again, for real this time, thank you to Jason, Derek, and Jonathan for joining us. And thank you to all of you, the player community, for tuning in for our first ringside report. We are so excited to release this game and we can't wait for y'all to get your hands on it. Yeah, thank you guys uh, so much uh, for, for joining us. And thank you all for tuning in. Um, we will talk to you all soon. And in the meantime, check us out on social media at WWE Games. Okay, bye. Peace.